channel, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. My name is Olivia. Today is Friday, August 26th, and I am back for my stitching update. It has been two weeks since my last one, so I hope you've all been well and you've been stitching, making, and creating all of the things. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast slash vlog where I typically talk about my cross stitching as well as my quilting. But if quilting is not something you're interested in seeing or hearing, I show it a little bit later on in the video and I let you know in plenty of time that they will be making their appearance. So that way you can go on to the next floss tube video. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So how have you guys all been? Hope you've had a wonderful two weeks since we last sat down to chat. Uh, much has happened over these past two weeks for us. Uh, we ended up taking a little vacation, uh, which you will definitely see reflected in everything I'm going to show you today. I know in my last video, I talked a little bit about how I was just going to kind of have the same things in my rotation um, that I worked on, and I still do. I have less, but uh, because I was gone and I didn't do any stitching the whole time I was gone, I definitely don't have as much progress as I typically you know, would like to show. I still have progress, but I knew that this was going to come up. I didn't say anything in my last video because um, I didn't want to announce that I was going to be leaving my home. Uh, and the reason why is years ago, there was a commercial uh, that came out. And to me, it's probably only been like a couple of years ago, but it's probably actually been a little bit longer. But it's one where somebody on social media announces that they're going on vacation and you have like a couple people comment to have a good time. And then like the third or fourth person down, it's clearly a burglar saying have a good time and then of course our house gets robbed so i i don't know it's always stuck with me and uh so anytime we ever leave the house or we're going anywhere i never really say anything until after we get back so we did take a vacation uh we went uh last monday we drove up to port angeles squim area in washington my husband used to live up there for many years and so we went up there, um, it's about four and a half hours from our house. Um, it's a beautiful drive along the uh, canal and uh, that area up there is very beautiful. It's very different, it's changed a lot, um, even for me and I you know, haven't been up there in you know, 25 years and then the time before that I was a little kid, I barely remember it. But even, even so, just in the last 20 years, that area has changed tremendously. Um, when my husband lived up there in Squim, they just had one stoplight, and of course, it's completely boomed. Um, there's a bypass around it now. There's houses where there used to be fields and mountains, and it's definitely exploded with a population. So it was completely different. Uh, so we spent the night in Port Angeles, and the next morning we got up and we took a ferry across to Victoria, BC, which is a very beautiful city, very peopley, and talk about a city that has changed tremendously in the last, you know, 20 plus years. Um, it was, I wouldn't have actually recognized it um, except for the Empress Hotel. Um, but we had a really good time. I've inserted some pictures in the beginning, so the pictures probably took a little bit longer than they normally do. Um, we had a good time. It was extremely warm. Um, all of the beautiful flowers were out. And talk about a place that knows how to do a beautiful flower bed or hanging basket. I just was so inspired. Um, I took way too many pictures of flowers. <laughs> and I have so many ideas percolating because uh, I mean, obviously I won't be able to do my flower garden on that grand scale, but I definitely loved how they took things that I never would have thought and they put them together and they just exploded in all this beautiful color and um, it was just so beautiful. It was definitely very inspiring. And uh, of course, while we were there, I ended up uh, getting some horrible allergies because our pollen count was off the charts. So I actually ended up sick the whole time we were there still running around and did stuff because I'm not going to go all that way and not do anything. But um, yeah, it definitely was um, not fun. I felt like maybe I should get a do over. Um, and I would like to go back maybe um, in the fall. I mean, obviously not this year, but at some point I would like to go back uh, maybe at a different point um, 
because it is a beautiful city to explore. There's still a lot I would love to see. I would like to go see the castle. Um, I'd actually like to go up farther, so I told my husband we should take our car and then um, that way we can travel around the island. Uh, we did get to go out to Bouchard Gardens, which that is one amazing place. And my grandma and my friends, they all told me that when you go, to, go there to Victoria, you need to make sure you go see the gardens. And it was absolutely go fabulous. Go I mean, it's a, such a beautiful place. And I would, I would love to have that place as my flower garden. It's just absolutely spectacular. And again, I mean, just the way that they, you know, decorate the beds with all of the flowers and just like the, it's just like so outrageously gorgeous and um, definitely very inspiring, a beautiful place. Um, I wish we had been able to stay a bit, little bit longer, but it started to get really, really hot and there was a lot of people coming in on tour buses and so we spent about two hours at the gardens and then um, we caught a bus and went back into Victoria. But um, we also did the Royal British Museum and that was probably the biggest bummer uh, because when we had went 20 plus, 25 years ago, um, we remember the big like life-size displays that were in the museum and just how much fun it was and so we were really looking forward to showing the kids all of that we get there and all of that area is closed and it had been closed for about eight months they were renovating some of it and then they said the other part of it and another part of why it wasn't open was it had to do with politics so very disappointed because like i said we were looking forward to taking the kids there and showing them like the big life-size ship and the, um, the western town and just all of that. And so that was, that was a huge bummer. And another reason why I hope at some point we will not maybe wait 20 years to go again, but you know, maybe be able to go back in a couple of years and that hopefully the kids will um, come along and then that way, you know, we can go see it. But such a beautiful city. Um, I always love going there. It's such, um, it's kind of a world away. I mean, even though it's, it's, you know, technically not like a, it is a tourist destination, but that's not its main pool. I mean, it's kind of like a, it's a whole other world. Um, it seems like it sort of has like a tropical vibe, even though it doesn't. It's just, it's such a beautiful place to visit. So I'm hoping that we will be able to do that again and go. Um, but we spent a couple of days there and then we headed back home. And um, I, uh, I basically was just kind of wiped out between, you know, the because we did so much walking. I mean, every, I mean, it was just constant walking and then, with being sick the whole time, it just totally kicked me in the booty and I ended up not feeling good. Well, I wasn't feeling good, so I ended up spending some time um, just kind of laying around. <laughs> and that is why there's not that much, uh, pro you know, that much to show you today. Um, I did take a project with me and I never started it. Um, so I took it all the way up there, didn't, didn't do anything with it. And um, so it goes back into the... Um, kits to be stitched, uh, which was kind of a bummer because I had this, I was going to have Allison take a picture of me stitching on the ferry <laughs> and then just at various places around town. But I definitely, um, it would not have been a good picture. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I looked up right the whole time. And the good news was I wasn't the only one suffering from allergies. I mean, there was a lot of people walking around that looked exactly like me and I felt a whole lot better. <laughs> but I, I definitely hope that at some point we'll be able to go back and I can sort of get a do-over. <laughs> All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is start off with some questions. Uh, before I do, I wanna say a thank you to everybody who watched my previous video and left me such kind comments. I know I say this in every single video, but I appreciate all of you guys who take a little bit of time out of your day to hang out with me. I have no idea how much it means to me, so thank you so very much. First question I got was about a, a decoration that was actually on the pie safe behind me, and it is this one. I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to get the whole thing in the frame. Um, 
So the flags I purchased from an online Facebook group. And if you're interested, um, let me know down below and I will let you know what the name of the group is. They uh, sell um, primitive decor. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's a great group. Um, I purchased a couple of things from them. Super tempting because uh, every day they post new items for sale and Quite honestly, I if I gave in to temptation, I would be in a lot of trouble. But I purchased these at uh, towards the end of spring, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with them. I had seen some different displays on Pinterest, and then I just happened to be watching uh, Christy of Daisy Case Primitives. She did a video um, that she calls "Feather Your Nest," and she changes so she'll. Um, do a video whenever she changes out some of her decor and she kind of talks about um, the decor and how she does it and she had a flag decoration that I really really loved and I asked how you know where she got it and I think she had purchased it online but she told me that you know basically all you needed was you know something like this and then you just drill some holes in it. I had this wooden spool um, originally it had had a plant in it and then the plant died. It was an air plant, go figure, and, and, and I killed it. Uh, and, but it had been sitting out in the depressing dungeon. And I thought, you know what, it would be perfect. I could take the two flags, I could have Brian drill some holes, and I could put them in it. I painted it in my favorite color of mustard paint. And I distressed it a little bit with some antiquing wax, and here you go. So um, it's a lot of fun. I. I love it. I did not get it done in time for the 4th of July. I finished it like a week later, but that's okay. Um, it'll be ready for next year. <laughs> um, my next question comes from DAZ Stitches, and she wants to know what my favorite fabric count to stitch on is and why. So I had to think about this one because I do enjoy stitching on 36 count, but I would have to say my favorite is probably 40 count. Uh, the reason why is um, I was trying to think of a of like a really good reason and everything just sort of gets jumbled together. I think for me, I like the look of it. I like the look of the stitches on the 40 count. Um, it just, and it could be everything that I'm stitching on the 40 count is usually like a sampler of some sort, but I just, I like the way that they look. It just looks very elegant, all of the stitches on the 40 count. Um, so I just, I think I like the kind of the vibe that the, the stitching has on the 40 count, if that makes any sense. I really had to think about it because there's, there's a lot of reasons why I like it, but all of them just sort of get jumbled together and it doesn't really make any sense except in my head. <laughs> but I would have to say that it's just the look of the stitching on the 40 count. I just really like the vibes that it gives me, all the feels. <laughs> um, the next question came from Mary K. Wolf and she wanted to know, when I frame my cross stitch, do I put it under glass? Uh, so I do not personally, when I frame my own stuff, I don't put it under glass. However, um, there are certain things around here that I've had professionally framed that I did put under glass. Um, and that was just because, uh, like in the case of Queen of Freedom, she had a lot of beads and I didn't want any of the beads to become, you know, damaged. Um, I also hope that it will be an heirloom piece that will be passed down through the generations. Uh, my Anniversaries of the Heart is also framed under museum glass and for the same reason. I just didn't want it to, it's such a, an emotional piece for me and it's, there's so, so many different family members that I have stitched in that piece that I definitely want it to be passed down as well. And so putting it behind the museum glass helps it for at least for a little while stay safe uh, but for my own stuff, I, or for my own like recent framed finishes, I don't put them under glass and that's just because I don't have any way of cutting the glass. Um, there's no place around here anymore that does it professionally. So, you know, that's something that I would have to send off for. And um, so, yeah, I would have to be something really, really that I really, really, really wanted to make sure lasted for like a thousand years. And then I would put it, I would send it off and, you know, have it professionally framed under museum glass. Uh, the second part of her question, 
So in my last video, I showed my American farmhouse. I talked about how when I had first started working on that particular piece, I was fairly new into cross stitching. And I had kind of wished that I hadn't, you know, snugged it way up in the corner to where there's not a whole lot of uh, room for framing to be worked with. And I had mentioned that I had wished it when I was a new stitcher, I had known that. And so her question is, what other things should a new stitcher be aware of when starting a new piece? So I have two things that I feel like are key that a new stitcher should know. So the first thing is, uh, when stitching on a piece of 18 count Ada, only use one strand of floss. <laughs> uh, that Knowing that uh, back when I first got into cross stitching would have been really helpful. However, when I um, first started, because I had first started learning how to cross stitch when I was about 11 or 12, my grandma taught me, dabbled in it as a teenager, and when I got married, I worked on a couple of things and then um, ended up setting it aside to uh, learn how to quilt. But everything that I worked from had a kit. And I, so when I came back into cross stitching, I didn't know anything about anything. And my grandma had given me some pieces of Ada that um, she no longer was using. And I picked up a piece of 18 count Ada and I started working on it with two strands of DMC. And it was horrible. <laughs> and it wasn't until after I got a little ways into the project that, um, you know, it finally clicked and um, I ended up scrapping it because it just was not fun. So that's something I wish I would have known. And the second piece of advice I can give is always read the directions. And I'm gonna tell you why. So when I, again, was first back into cross stitching, there was a Facebook, um, it must have been a shop owner, a cross stitch shop owner that I followed on Facebook. And I think they had an eBay shop. And um, she had uploaded some new items. They were Halloween items. And one of these was, and I wanna say it was by Needlework Press, but it was, um, you took a Tim Holtz um, alarm clock and you um, cross stitched this design and it was a Halloween clock face. You cross stitched it and then you put it in it um, as finished. And it was super cute and she was selling the kits. And so I bought one and it came and um, I thought the alarm clock was so cute and then I had all of these pretty over dyed threads as well as this piece of over dyed linen. Now I had never stitched on linen um, so it was all new to me and I looked it up online, you know, how do you stitch on linen and I followed the directions. I used two pieces of floss because it was a 30 count linen used two pieces of floss and I started stitching this clock face. And as I'm stitching it, I'm thinking, wow, they hardly gave me any linen to work with at all. And I got it done and I was like, I was so proud of myself. I had finished this clock face and I went and I grabbed the clock, which was still in its box, took it out and I'm like, oh my gosh, my piece is way too big. And I I've, I've like didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done wrong. I had followed other people who had stitched it and theirs looked beautiful. And I'm thinking, what did I do wrong? Like, is my clock too small? I didn't understand. Well, if I had read the directions, which I would not have understood them from the get go, I was supposed to stitch on this 30 count linen, but I was supposed to stitch one over one. And I stitched two over two. So here is my finish from all those years ago. Um, I've never done anything with it. I sold the clock because uh, it had sat. I mean, I honestly didn't know what to do. Um, and I was super embarrassed because I had made this error. And if I would have just read the directions, I mean, granted, I would not have understood what one over one was, but I'm sure I could have looked it up and figured it out. Um, so I've had this in the uh, box of finishes. Um, I see it every once in a while um, and I always get a little bit more cringy embarrassed. Uh, I probably could turn this into some sort of a pillow or something and I'm, I might at some point, but yeah, I definitely was. <laughs> I just, I didn't know what I was doing. I wish there would have been somebody to tell me. This was before I had found out about floss tubes. So had I, you know, maybe, watch some floss tube, I might've been able to um, realize like there's all these different ways to um, stitch. Um, floss tube helped me understand a lot of things. So that was a blessing to me, but 
Yes. Um, every once in a while I see this particular one pop up in people's decor. There's a Christmas one. I think there's a sewing time one or a stitching time one. Um, and I always think about mine sitting in the uh, box of finishes <laughs> underneath everything. <laughs> So yeah, I think I think it's a piece of 30 count grasshopper by Weeks Dye Works, and I would have stitched it with the called for threads. Um, I don't remember if it was DMC or if it was over dyed, but I definitely remember being excited that it was a piece of over dyed linen because it was the first time I'd ever worked on it. So definitely important to read those directions. <laughs> over the past two weeks I did continue to work on my rotation and in my last video I did talk a little bit about how I was I don't I, I decided to not start a bunch of new stuff I've decided to continue working on what has been in the rotation to kind of get things finished and so over these past two weeks I've continued to just kind of stick to that plan um, also over the past 14 days five of them I lost because I was on vacation and then I was not feeling very well. So I realized, I think it was on Saturday that I needed to like buckle down and get some stuff done so I would have stuff to show in this video. Uh, last night I started back on Grateful, Thankful, Blessed by Brenda Gervais. Uh, so in my last video I had the house finally completely finished. And last night I was able to go in, I worked on the basket underneath the pumpkin and then the pumpkin and some of the vines. So that is what I was able to get done last night. I really, really love how this is turning out. The only thing is I wish that the words would show up a little bit better in person they do, but on camera, um, I can see some of them, some of like the darker ones, but then the lighter ones just fade in to the linen. Uh, I'm going to continue to keep going on it, um, and I think I talked about this last time too, how I was considering ripping them out, um, but I was told that once I get it into the frame, those um, letters should um, pop up a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it, and I do kind of like the faded look sometimes in the borders, not only because it helps in the framing if the framing gets a little wonky, um, but it kind of gives it that sort of um, old... Uh, rusty crusty vibe that I like. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count Legacy with various over dyed and DMC flosses one over two So tonight hopefully um, I will be able to get this video edited and then I'll be able to work on this tonight And I will continue to work on it for the next couple of nights and get a little bit farther so I really enjoy this piece. I'm glad I decided to start working on it because now that everyone is starting to get out some of their fall stuff, I'm seeing it pop up on their sampler walls and I just really love it and I really want it on my wall this year. <laughs> and then I have Autumn at Hackburn Hollow by Caratel Samplings. I am working on the Tom Turkey block down here. And in my last video, I had, um, some of him filled in, but I went and did, um, I stitched his outline and then I stitched his head. So I still had the rest of him to fill in. And over the past five days, I was able to do that. So I finished him and I started working on the corn stalks on his name, Tom. And then there are, um, pieces of corn, um, left to do. There's like uh, four pieces of corn. And they are very, very, very confetti heavy. I had somebody ask me what that means. And it basically means you have a bunch of floss color changes in a small space. So there are quite a few color changes that I have to make in order to fill in the corn, which um, that is the one I'm working on now. And I think that I'm going to, um, I'm only going to do this type of corn, maybe here and here, and then here and here, I want to do just um, a darker, because uh, uh, sometimes when you go to get the bundles, you'll get the ones that have like a variety of colors in the corn, and then you'll have one that's like a deep burgundy, and I kind of want to do that, and then maybe like, um, there's always one that's sort of like a mustery, rusty color, and I kind of want to do, do that, you know, because that's kind of how you get your bundles. You get 
you know, I don't know what all those different corns are called. I just usually go in and just get a bunch of them. <laughs> but I wanted to kind of change them a little bit to reflect the type of corn that I would get to decorate around the house. So here is what it looks like all together. So this is how long it will be. And I cannot wait. I have, I'm hoping that when this is in the next five day rotation that I will be able to finish this block. I'm gonna try really, really hard. I might try to squeeze it in maybe on a Sunday afternoon or something if there's nothing going on. But I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha with uh, various DMCs, one over two. I have changed out some of the colors and when I get it all done, I will make sure to um, let you guys know what it is. I also was debating about maybe stitching a pumpkin because there's like some little doodads on either side of him. And I am tempted instead of stitching one of the doodads to put a piece, uh, put a pumpkin right here. But I don't know that I will do that. So I love it. I cannot wait to get this done because I know I will get it done this year and it would be really really cool if I could get it done by the middle of October I'm just gonna kind of throw it out there I'm hoping it will be done before then but um, I would really really like to have this done uh, and then maybe get it framed and have it up in November chances are it will be a piece that I put out probably year-round for a little while <laughs> because uh, I just absolutely love it, um, but I cannot wait. I'm so close. I mean, I can see the pinpoint of light at the finish line, and I cannot wait to have this one done. Uh, I have decided to um, order pieces of frame molding from Home Depot. I've been looking around. I haven't really had any luck finding a frame that is big enough without it being like humongous and having to cut down a lot of it. I can either get the, you know, definitely the width, but it's the length that I am, I'm struggling with finding. And then when I find something that I think might work, it's just kind of a plastic frame. And I think I want it to be a little bit more durable. So um, I think I've decided to purchase uh, pieces of framing molding from Home Depot and uh, making it myself, staining it. And because when I see it, I see it sort of in a stained frame like I did my Anne Priest. So oh, I can't wait. I just, I am like giddy with anticipation because I, I definitely want this done soon. I know it's gonna be done soon. And if I could get away with it, I would just work on it till it's done. But I, I know I need a little bit of variety in my floss tube video, so I definitely need to be working on at least a couple of things. <laughs> so I did have a finish over the past two weeks, and that is American Farmhouse by The Scarlet House. So in my last video, I think I was still working down underneath here. But after the video was over and then in the next couple of days, I was able to finish um, the grass and then I started working on this block here. And I was about halfway done with it. Went on vacation and then when I came home on Saturday, I was kind of feeling a little bit better and I decided to sit down and take a little while to finish working on it because I was really close and I thought if I just gave myself like an hour, hour and a half, I'd probably be able to finish it. And I did. So here it is. So I stitched this on a piece of 36 count ale by Picture This Plus with the called for threads one over two. And I absolutely love this piece so very, very much. I cannot wait to frame it. And I did go to the Goodwill yesterday and I was able to find a frame. Uh, so over these next two weeks, I will get that cut down, paint it, and then get this in it. I also worked on um, refinishing an old finish and I was gonna show it in today's video, but I think I'll wait till next time because I need to kind of finish it. I mean, I have it, it's on its mat board, it's laced, uh, but I need to finish the back of it. And so maybe I'll have these, I'll have that one and this one to show in my next video. So uh, I love it. I love how it turned out. I'm so glad that I pulled it up out of the mocking basket of whips because it was one that definitely, it needed to be finished. Um, and I did have a love-hate relationship with this one for a little while. And, but 
with the knowledge that I gained from the time I first started it until now, I was able to finish it easy peasy. So I love it. I cannot wait to get it framed. I think this one is going to be one that is going to be in my bedroom. I know a lot of you guys are, have asked me when I am going to do a bedroom tour and I, st I actually haven't worked on other than stitching stuff for it, um, I have not um, finished working on my bedroom. I need to get back to that. I kind of got stalled out because of the summer and, and I have some ideas about what I want to do and I just need to implement them. And so I need to, I need to get back to that because I definitely have some ideas. I have two walls that I need to work on uh, and I have, you know, finished pieces that I will be putting there. And this will be one of them because I think it'll be perfect and I can't wait and I'm so glad that I'm so glad I didn't chuck it and throw it in the trash like I originally wanted to back in 2019 I think when I started working at 18 because um, I honestly yeah I just I'm glad I didn't uh, and I'm glad that I decided to pull it out and start working on it and get it finished and it's one less whip in the mocking basket and I think that brings me to three remaining so um, I can't wait to get get some of those finished later on um, and I've had some of you ask what I will work on next um, out of the mocking basket and when I finish Autumn at Hawkland Hollow I will work on Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain and I'll work on it till it's done. So um, slowly but surely um, I will get that mocking basket emptied out and then I will only be working on current whips. I don't want any outstanding anymore. <laughs> In my last video, I did have a giveaway and thank you as always to everyone who played along. The question was, what is your state bird? And a side benefit of asking those, those types of questions is because it kind of lets me see where everyone is from. And I love knowing that I have friends that live all over the world. That is just such the coolest feeling. Uh, the Oregon state bird is the Western Meadowlark, and we share it with several other states. So we share it with Kansas, Nebraska, Montana, Wyoming, and North Dakota. And I read up a little bit on the Western Meadowlark, and up until probably about four months ago, I had never seen one. And then early in the spring, there were these birds that all of a sudden hung around. I had never seen them before. Um, they had a very pretty musical sound to their voice, very unique. And um, Allison went and looked it up and it was a Western Meadowlark. And um, we have two females that I see off and on that have kind of been hanging on. The male I haven't seen um, since that initial first time, but they are very, I love the sound of their voice. Um, so I'm hoping maybe they'll stick around. Uh, we try to, you know, put out a little bit of bird food at that time to sort of entice them to stay, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know that they are migrating birds, so that's why I'm hoping that they'll stick around. Uh, from what I've read, they're a little bit, I don't know that they're like endangered, but they're heading that way, so hopefully um, maybe they'll stick around. We'll have a bunch of little baby meadow larks. <laughs> For five giveaways up for grabs and if you are one of the lucky winners what you will need to do is contact me via email and I will put my contact information down below. Uh, the first winner is for the Stitch Quarterly Home and that is Heartland Stitcher. Uh, number two was for this Americana design that was also a Stitch Quarterly and the winner is Elizabeth Coleman. Uh, number two is for You Are the Boss, and that winner is Karen S. Four is for the Citrus Summer Pattern, and the winner is Mar Marcy slash Marcia, <laughs> and I'll, I'll scroll it. And then number five is for the Support Group Cross Stitch, and the winner is Teresa Atkinson. So congratulations to all of the winners. Again, if you can contact me via email, and I will put all my contact information down below, send me your address, and I will get these out in the mail to you soon. This video also has a giveaway, 
And to be eligible to win, you must make sure that you are a subscriber, like the video, and answer the question down below. There are five giveaway prizes up for grabs, so you will need to indicate which one of those you are interested in winning in somewhere in your answer. And in my next video, I will pull a I will pull winners and announce them in my next video. <laughs> uh, number one is by Hands On Design called Hip Hop Chalk Full, and I actually read that backwards for the first time ever. So um, it comes with the chart, a piece of DMC floss, and the 14 count Black Ada. So it's a partial kit. And this is one that was donated by my friend Lisa. Um, the next one also donated by Lisa is the Bloom Chalk Full by Hands On Design. So it comes with the chart and a piece of 14 count Ada. So if you're interested in that one, it is number two. Number three is Liberty's Welcome by Plum Street Samplers. I think this is number three. I get to this point and then I mess up and then I have to redo it. So this is number three, Liberty's Welcome. Number four is Farmhouse Christmas Cockadoodle Doo by Little House Needleworks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've done this part like four times and I keep messing up and I'm determined not to start over again. So that is number four. And number five is Up on the Housetop by Stitching with the Housewives. So this is number five. So if you're interested in winning any of those, make sure you put it in your answer down below. And if I have made any mistakes, as always, I will be scrolling some stuff. <laughs> So I forgot to say what the giveaway question is, and this one is courtesy of Katherine Summers, and that is, what is your state treat? So I am enjoying all of these state um, questions. If you don't have, um, uh, you know, cause some places, uh, some people live in provinces or they have a national, um, you can answer that down below. Uh, what is your national tree or what is the tree of your province or county or your area? and let me know that down below. If you don't have one, um, just let me know that you don't have one and you can still enter to win the giveaway. I'm curious what Oregon state tree is. I think I know what it is, but I also thought I knew what the state bird was and I was wrong. So I did not look it up. I'm gonna go look it up when this video is over because I am very curious and I'm hoping that out of all of the questions, I get this one right. <laughs> Anyway, answer what is your state tree down below. And in my next video, I will pick the winners. Again, make sure you indicate which ones you are interested in winning. Thank you so much for playing. I really enjoy these questions so very much. I'm always up for suggestions. So if you think of a really good giveaway question, let me know. <laughs> Well, my friends, that is the end of the cross stitching portion of the video. And before you go, I just wanted to show the Fredster. I know in my last video, I did not show him and I meant to grab him, but he was being so sweet and he was just kind of playing and he was right at the base of my feet, just kind of snuggled up and I didn't really want to disturb him, but I had planned to show him. <laughs> I feel like he's sliding off camera. Uh, but I have planned to show him and so I definitely wanted to make sure I showed him in this video because today is National Dog Day and while we were gone on vacation we did board him at the vet. He hated it, I did too and I was never so glad when I could go and get him and bring him home. Uh, he has not let me out of his sight since so he definitely has been like glued to my side a little bit more than usual. <laughs> But he is so sweet. I woke him up from his nap to bring him. <laughs> oh, he's so sweet. Anyway, so I wanted to show him. And uh, so if you're not interested in seeing quilting, this is a great stopping off point. And I thank you so much for stopping by today. And I will, of course, be back in two weeks. But now we're going to talk about quilts. <laughs> So over the past two weeks, uh, my quilting definitely suffered. Um, I don't think I even touched my sewing machine for about a week. And then last Sunday, I decided to sit down and work on my scrappy stars because I knew my video was coming up and I knew I needed to get at least one row done. So that is kind of what I did all day last Sunday. Um, I have one extra scrappy star box. So this one will be put into the next row. Um, usually every other row I have to do five darks and five and four lights and then I have to flip them so then I have to do five lights and four darks and I did one too many darks 
but that's okay. So I will just have it to do, um, I will have it ready for next time. So the row that I finished is the top row. And here it is. So they're coming along very nicely. And it's getting really hard to show it and make sure that you can see all of them. So I have six rows done and three more to go. And I love it. I cannot wait to get this one done. Um, I kind of have a wild hair maybe to just sit down and finish the last three rows. I mean, I realize it would probably take a number of days to do that, but I keep thinking about it and because I've been doing it based on my videos so for every two weeks, I just know I have to get a row done, but I'm getting anxious to get the whole thing done. And the fact that there's only three rows left, I just, I really just want to be able to finish it. So we'll see. I don't think that's going to happen because I have some other projects I need to start working on, but you just never know. Uh, before I forget, the quilt behind me is called the Temecula Album Quilt. It is by Temecula Quilt Company, and it is available now on her website, I believe, as a PDF download. I, I think, maybe, but um, I will put a link to her website down below. So, <clears throat> so over this past week, I was able to work on my Block Bonanza quilt. Um, I get mine through Homestead Hearth as a Block of the Month, and this is what the quilt will look like when it is finished. I received my August blocks in the mail and just this morning I was able to finish the last one. There were four of them and this is the one that I finished today. Um, I think I cut them out, uh, I think I started cutting them out before I went on vacation and then um, I finished when I got home and then I assembled them over the past couple of nights. This is the next one. And um, the only downside was two of my blocks were shorted um, fabric. So I had to, luckily, I had some um, leftover in my stash that I was able to substitute. So they'll look a little bit different, but I don't think that you'll notice. I kind of stayed within the fame, same color family. So I'm glad I've got those all complete. Um, I've had a number of you guys ask if um, this particular pattern is available, and it is. I've seen it the pattern available on Etsy and then also on the Fat Quarter Shop. I don't know about the kits. Every once in a while I see one pop up, but um, I think they're coming, they're starting to get far and few in between. However, I believe that you can still uh, pick up fabric from the fabric line. Um, you might have to you know search far and wide for it but I think you can still you know if you're interested in the quilt and you want to put it together like they have it um, you could you know definitely search the internet and get that fabric um, and if you it is something that you do want to make I would highly recommend you do it now then wait you know six more months to a year because the more time goes on the fabric starts to become harder and harder to find and um, yeah so if it's something you're interested in I definitely would start searching <laughs> right and then one last thing before I go um, I have been and one last thing before I go um, the beginning of September my friend Reetha and I are going to be starting a quilt together we're gonna do it as a block of the month um, because when this book came out well before the book came out it was done as a block of the month and it is called Hope's Journey by Betsy Chechian and this is the quilt we'll be making here. It is a gorgeous quilt. We've seen it um, pop up uh, from time to time on Instagram. This is what it will look like. So I uh, can't wait to start it. I am going to do mine out of the Joe Morton line called Adam's Town. So I splurged and I bought this. I probably won't be able to buy anything for a while, but I had to have this. It's such a beautiful fabric line. It came while I was on vacation. It's absolutely worth every penny I spent on it, but yeah, it definitely wasn't cheap. Um, luckily, PayPal lets you make payments. <laughs> so that's what I did. So I will be, um, 
I, I will use other fabrics too because I definitely will need a lot more than just this, but um, this will be in a lot of the blocks. So I'm excited. I can't wait. Well, my friends, that brings me to the end of my video. If you have stuck around for this length of time, thank you so very, very much. I do appreciate it. Uh, the plan will be to continue working on everything I've shown and to get started on Hope's journey. And I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, does she need another quilt? The answer is yes. <laughs> but I'm excited. It's going to be something I'm going to work on for the next year. And hopefully by this time next year, when I'm sitting here doing my video, it'll be right here. <laughs> or close. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to see what I'm up to in between my videos, I haven't, I'm on Instagram. I'm Pumpkin Hollow Quilts on Instagram, or I have a Facebook page called Pumpkin Hollow Quilting, and I will put a link to both of those down below. Thank you so very much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great end to August and a wonderful start to September, and I will see you all again soon. Bye-bye.